Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of the all-new 10 Seconds XC Off-Roadcast. I'm Rodney Tomlin and today my guest Bad Thad Duval and want to take this opportunity to say a quick thanks to our good friends that help make things possible including our friends at Teeley Energy Racing, our presenting sponsors along with co-presenting sponsor Phoenix Racing. And also a special thanks to our good friends at DP Brakes, What's Stopping You, and also associate sponsors like Tyler Lens Motorsports, and our good friends at LaDon Racing, and a special thanks as well to uh, XC Part Solutions, and our good friend John Coffey, your Amsoil dealer. And of course, as uh, we get set for a big day here in uh, 10 Seconds USA, I guess we could say, man, it's been a while. Uh, Ted, I, I haven't said it in a while. I know uh, I, I, we did a little contest here a couple weeks ago. The, the Apollo family, I got to give them credit for a job well done on the 10 seconds. They went out, they did, I don't know if you saw it on, on, on there or not. I'll try to, to yeah. maybe link it. But man, they, they did the whole starting line it thing. They had the Bob O'Reilly, they had the Ricky Towery. They, <laughs> and the dude, I'm telling you, sounded probably as good or better than I did doing 10 seconds and did I get worried about my job at that particular point just a little bit but <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's funny because um actually I've been going to physical therapy and one of the guys in there was talking about the 10 second guy the other day being legendary so I, it was kind of cool that was uh it was pretty fun hey man how you fit you're talking to a legend right now Thad <laughs> <laughs> that's good uh, hey if it works it works hey by the way I'm wearing my uh Camouflage DP Brakes hat in honor of you, my friend, because I know you are an avid uh, outdoorsman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I saw that. And so, sure. any, any gobbler reports on you right now? Um, two down in West Virginia and two to go in Ohio. So it's been a pretty good week. So I can't complain. Wow. So you've got yeah. like, you you you're kind of like you go both ways there. You're right on the river. I mean, you got land on both sides of the river that you get to hunt, huh? Yeah, it works out pretty good. Um, luckily, I was able to get my high license before they shut down um, out-of-state hunting over the whole COVID thing. So I was able to sneak in and get my license so I can uh, I can still go over there and hunt. I can uh, hunt here at the house. So it uh, right. works out well, pretty good. That, that's, that's a good question, man. I live, I don't know, I'm probably 30 miles from the border, and I haven't ventured out of the county and God 30 days or better, man. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm starting to go a little bit crazy. I'm, I'm, I'm starting to cut, I'm about to cut my own hair and all that good stuff. <laughs> yeah. Dave, a couple of days ago, you should have seen me. I look like a wild drunk people driving by and on the road, <laughs> like double takes at me to see what yeah. the is that out there. But, uh, yeah, so what is the border like, man? Do you have like swim across the river with your gun on your back and everything and go hunting or how's that all work? Um, actually, it hasn't been that bad. Um, there was reports that they were going to shut the borders down for a while, but uh, luckily, Wood County, West Virginia, and then Washington County, Ohio, is the two counties um, I live right next to. So uh, they're not really high on the whole COVID uh, numbers wise, so they haven't had a lot of restrictions. So I've been lucky enough to be able to travel back and forth, and um, yeah, it hasn't been that bad at all. So it's not really, not really hampered you. And I mean, I mean, big, I mean, as bad as things are, uh, honestly, I mean, I will probably get into this a little bit further on as we go on in the interview, but wow. I mean, um, this couldn't, this COVID thing couldn't have come at a better time for you <laughs> and your healing yeah. process, man. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You know, it's, it's a bummer at the same time, just for other people. And, um, a lot, I mean, a lot of the guys make a living racing. So I, I mean, it's probably tough for them, but for me on looking into it, I'm like, man, it's like the best time for me to recover and um, yeah, to get surgery. And I know a lot of guys have elected to go with surgery, like even in the supercross and motocross world, a lot of the guys have, have got surgeries on things. And um, yeah, I, I guess for as crappy it was, it was a good timing for sure. Yeah. So, so uh, what is the deal? What, what is, I mean, I mean, let, let's go back. I mean, uh, this is, this is a, a a lingering injury for you, man. I mean, this isn't something that just came up out of the blue. This is something you've been dealing with for a couple of years now, huh? Well, uh, just kind of, you know, back in October is when I really, really did a number on my knee and um, I missed the last couple of races and just, uh, I don't know, I, I can't put a whole year together for the championship run. And um, yeah, I, I boogered my knee up. And the next day I found out that, that Caleb kind of boogered himself up too. So it was kind of like a, I don't know. It was a bad day for sure. And, um, let that one slip away. And then, uh, just kind of, 
uh, I don't know. I felt like I'm running out of years to win the championship. So I kind of was didn't elect to go with surgery and thought I could let it heal on its own and which it, it did. It was good. I, I went to Florida the beginning of January and started training. Um, I jumped in with uh, the coastal guys who was training a lot with Tyler Rattray, like a, a motocross guy. And um, yeah, I felt good. I felt strong. I felt really good on the bike. We kind of had a new setup this year with the bike. I was really happy with and. Um, yeah, did some testing uh, with the Husky guys and the WP guys at Stu's place before South Carolina. And, man, it felt like everything was in order for sure to, to make a run for the championship. And then, uh, yeah, just a weird first lap crash. I don't even know. Stu said I hit a stump or something. And I knew right then and there this I, I had – I did something my knee again, and um, I tried to ride the rest of the race knowing if I could get the points, but it just got so bad where I couldn't even bend my leg to hardly pick it up on the foot peg. So, um, yeah, just uh, it was one of those days where I wish I could forget for sure. Yeah, man, that's a heartbreaker. I mean, and, and you've had plenty of those, man. I mean, uh, <laughs> I mean, you know it as well. I mean, you've been there right there so many times yeah man. for sure I, and i'm not telling yeah, you just you don't know yeah it's uh it's very frustrating but at the same time it's it's part of the sport it's part of just i don't know how it works i guess so i mean if you look back at it uh i mean i've had injuries other people's have injuries just mine don't come at very good times i guess you could say and um yeah just got to work on it and uh, look forward to the future for sure yeah, I mean, and that's one good thing that you've been able to always do is is to adapt and overcome and, and keep pushing forward. You know, it seems like whenever maybe some people maybe, ah, well, that right there, that'll do it for that. I mean, you, you come bouncing right back, man. And, and you th it always seems like you come back stronger. Um, more. To yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm almost to the point now where I, I, I'm, I'm ready to start, like, getting back to where I am. And hopefully a couple more weeks I'm able to cycle again. And, um honestly just to be truthful I, I miss the pain and suffering of racing I don't know like I enjoy it the the older I've got the the more I I really enjoy it and I feel like um yeah I may be getting older in age and one of the older guys in the class but I still feel like I still have a good couple of years in me and um yeah just uh just injuries suck for sure how old are you I I'm 30 this year so. 30 yep. yeah so, so uh, I mean, it, I, looking at it, I, I feel like I've, uh, I mean, I've done a lot of research, just kind of hoping one day, you know, I can help the kids out or whatever. And it seems like a lot of like, you look at the Ironman marathon guys, a lot of the guys really don't peak till they're 28 to 34. And I feel like I'm 30 now. And I, I feel like I'm, I'm, I don't even feel like I've peaked yet. Like, I feel like I'm still learning. I'm getting better. I'm getting faster. I'm learning my body just learning how to adapt to things and just, um, yeah, have the heart and the grit to, to always come back and be stronger. Well, I mean, you look at the big picture. I mean, the riders that have been around a while and the ones that are the consistent, uh, in, in my opinion, times are the, the more matured riders, the seasoned riders. Um, you know, you, you look back, I mean, look at Barry. I mean, yeah, he had a yeah. great career as a young guy, but as he got older, he got stronger. Look at Rodney Smith, Fred Andrews. Yeah. I mean, he was a little older whenever he was peaking in his career. Uh, I think I mentioned Rodney Smith. Scott Summers even, you know, he was a yeah. little older in his career. I mean, a lot of these guys started out young. Caleb, I mean, looking at the big picture for Caleb even, I mean, it took him a few years. He had to mature and uh, to even mature into the champion that he is now. I mean, you, you can see that age has made him – uh, even tougher to beat as time has gone on and, and, and more of a, of, of a challenge for you. So, I mean, I, I think you're right. I mean, I honestly, I think 30, uh, especially for a lot of guys might be the peak age, that 30 to 35 year range age 37. I mean, I mean, heck why not 40? I mean, yeah. uh, athletes today, uh, you guys take such good care of your bodies and, 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 and so fine tuned. I mean, into the forties is, to me, uh, uh, I mean, I think it's it's doable. I think it's feasible to think that that can happen. Yeah, for sure. I, I feel like, um, 
yeah, like I said, I, I still feel like I'm getting faster every time, like every year comes around and I feel like I'm getting better. I'm learning how to test with the bike, how to read the bike. It's just, it's kind of just maturity on my level. I feel like I've gotten better at and you know, I, every year I kind of wonder every time I go to Florida where I'm going to be at or whatever. And I always, always seem like I have more speed every year. So, um, I definitely feel like I have a good couple of years still left in me. And, um, I think, you know, Timmy at, at Rockstar, Husqvarna, um, my boss, he, he believes in me more than I do sometimes, I think. And he, you know, he says I got a good couple of years in me and, um, yeah, I put a lot of trust in him. So, for sure, I feel like, uh, yeah, I just got to gotta make a whole year happen, for sure. Yeah, and, I mean, Dad, what else do you know, man? I mean, you've, you've grown up around a race track. Your dad was uh, a pro ATV racer whenever you were a kid. Yeah. I mean, that, that's uh, you were basically born on the side of the trail, maybe even in a 10-by-10 10 10 on pro row. I don't know, man. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I – grew up doing this. This is, this is all I know. And, um, now that I have my little man, Jacoby, and he's starting to figure out dirt bike things and he's obsessed with dirt bikes. So I feel like I'm always going to be, be around the sport and I want to be around the sport. You know, a lot of the guys, they kind of step away and, um, yeah, I've, I've learned the last couple of years, the whole training side of it, the mentality, and I'm always trying to help kids. And, you know, even now that I'm hurt, I, I've still been, prepping my track here at home for kids to come ride and I try to work with kids as much as I can and um yeah I definitely I, I have a plan after racing for sure and that's always to be in the sport for sure that that's good and, and that's one thing I mean and, and what I was going to say basically I mean you are as much I mean you are a true GNC a product of GNCC there, there's no doubt about it I mean uh I mean there's a lot of questions I'm sure I'm sure those minds why why didn't you do the um, the four wheelers? What what brought you to a two wheel <laughs> things instead of four? Such a big um, four wheel guy. Yeah, you know, growing up with dad racing quads and um, everything, I actually I, I rode a quad till I was probably seven, maybe I think. And um, yeah, I I really enjoy it, and to this day I still enjoy jumping on somebody's four wheel every now and then and ripping around on and um, yeah, maybe after the whole professional bike thing I can go race a quad for fun just uh to have that challenge again and um I think with the whole quad side of it there was there wasn't as much money in it in it as the bike side and I think my parents saw that and um one day I came to them and said hey I, you know I want a dirt bike and I think they went and bought me a dirt bike that day and um uh, yeah I never it never looked back after that and I was lucky enough I think I might have been 11 years old my dad was really good friends with Barry and um all them guys Doug Whitmer who rode for Randy at Yamaha and um yeah they must have saw something in me and yeah they actually signed me to Yamaha at like 11 years old and um yeah just been head down since then wow man I mean that that that's that's a pretty good story one that a lot of people a lot of people don't know i'm sure i mean they they follow yeah. you they know you but they probably don't know the inside scoop and the inside story on that uh can we we'll talk can we talk a little bit about that and a few other things have you are you tied yeah. up for time right now all right well, let's no, take we're good break. let's take a quick break we'll go come right back and we're going to talk about that and a whole bunch of other stuff maybe even get into a little turkey hunting or something here with that. Yeah, for sure. we get back here on 10 seconds XC Parts Solutions is now available trackside at all GNCCs. Open Friday, noon till 6, Saturday, 7.30 a.m. to 6 p.m., and Sunday, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. XC Parts Solutions is a Moose Racing and Parts Unlimited dealer with a great inventory of Moose Racing products along with needed parts for bikes and quads. If you need raincoats, they got them. Umbrellas, they got them. Elfin ears for those mud races, they got them. Dry erase boards and markers, they have those too. Come by for a great deal on a great selection of Moose goggles and tear-offs used by a number of GNCC racers located on vendor row next to the moose racing transporter xc part solution can take orders at the track and it can be shipped right to your house late neat orders for in stock products received before noon on wednesdays can be picked up at the track email xc part solutions at gmail.com on instagram at xc parts or give them a call at 931-854-1100 or 931-261-2004 and don't forget all racers will receive rider support pricing from xc part solutions 
you ready for snowshoe this weekend, Brandon? Oh, yeah. Are you? Yeah. That's cool. Stop, Billy. Yeah. It's supposed to be pretty nasty this weekend up on Snowshoe Mountain. Stop it, Billy. I'm pretty pumped. Put the brakes on. DP brakes. Good enough to stop my ATV, his ATV, and hell, it'll even stop a Billy. <laughs> Did you know you can save up to 25% and receive free shipping on great AMSOIL products with their preferred customer program? AMSOIL also has special pricing arrangements and free shipping for commercial accounts such as trucking companies, loggers, landscapers, and businesses like yours. Or if you have a business and would like to begin selling AMSOIL products, you could qualify to participate in the AMSOIL retail account program. You could become an independent AMSOIL dealer and build and grow your own profitable businesses. For more information, call John Coffey, your full-service Amsoil dealer, at 877-694-4763 and leave him a message. John Coffey and Amsoil, your first call for synthetics. And welcome back to 10 Seconds. Rodney Tomlin along with Thad Duvall and uh, Thad from the uh, GNCC Pro Ranks. If you don't know Thad, then you don't know GNCC. Is, <laughs> <laughs> as we were mentioning just before the break, he is basically a uh, pure product of GNCC racing. And, and, and Thad, just to back up, folks, you know, we, people that don't know, and whenever they hear us talk about it, uh, uh, your dad, Chad Duvall, bad, that Chad, uh, you know, the original uh, originator of the badness, I believe in the family there, but <laughs> yeah, uh, you sure. know, I, I don't know that they recognize maybe who it is. Yeah. They know they was, he was a four wheeler racer and he was pretty good, but your dad got, a, he got a lot of wins. He got several wins. And I think probably one of the most monumental and probably biggest, he probably, Sparta. Well, uh, well, the thing, the, even be, before that, I'm talking Sparta, Kentucky. He was on row yeah. two. He was on yeah. a production model ATV when he won the overall on a production quad when these four four strokes first came out. That's whenever this was. May even be about right. When were you born? Uh, eighty nine. But this would have been ninety nine, maybe. No, I think it was a little later than that. Maybe oh one. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'd have to look back. I would have been maybe 11 or 12 at the time, maybe. We actually just watched the race the other day. I can't, I can't believe I don't remember the year of it or whatever. <laughs> but, yeah, that was, a, that, was a, that was a monumental thing for sure for him. And it, it's crazy because I always looked at that race, being an XC2 rider on the bike side, being like, hey, you know, I want to be the first guy to win the overall from the second row. My dad did it on a quad. I want to do it on a bike, but so close so many times, but never can make it happen. Yeah, and, and, and I, I don't know if you even realize the impact that maybe that win had that day on the ATV racing industry because I think it shifted a lot of standards. It, it proved something in the industry that hadn't been proven yet, and that was that the new production model ATVs yeah. were capable of winning, and that kind of, I think, lit a fire under a lot of people's tails and, and it started a new revolution honestly yeah you know he he kind of made that jump with four stroke tech uh mickey dunlop at the time and um yeah talking about quad stuff this is pretty this is pretty cool like i remember all that and i remember him making the switch to the four stroke a lot of people thought he was crazy and for him to get that win and, and watch how the sport has evolved today it, it's crazy because i feel like he started that revolution for sure and um, after that, it was just kind of year after year, more guys jumped that ship to the four stroke. And for me to feel like he started that, that that's pretty badass for sure. That is pretty, that is badass. You're absolutely correct, man. I mean, uh, he, and, and, you know, just the longevity of his career and what he did. And I, I know he even got sick and, you know, he had, yeah. he was sick for a while and was still racing. Yeah, you know, he got diagnosed with leukemia, I think, at the end of 2004. And he actually raced 2005 the whole year and just got a little too much for him. And, um, yeah, then it was all concentration on me. Exactly. And that's about the time that that your career was pretty much starting to blossom and bloom, man. I mean, that's yeah, for sure. a, lot of, a lot of focus went – 
uh, on to you. And I imagine probably a lot of pressure at the same time. Let's talk a little bit about that, man, because here you, you're 11 years old. Yeah. You come, you know, you, you get a, a straight onto a factory Yamaha ride. I mean, even though you're really close to the situation, you had to think, wow, this is a pretty big deal I've got going on here. Yeah, for sure. You know, I, I feel like um, we're 2007 is when the when it really started the first year next, or I should say I could go back um, 2005. I moved up to the big bikes and uh, raced 200B and um, won a lot. And then, you know, the next year I went to 250A, uh, won a lot, but lost the championship. And um, yeah, then went to, to XC2 um 2007 uh won a lot had a battle with justin williamson and all them guys down to the last couple races and i think i ended up maybe third that year and then 2008 when things really started clicking i i won the the xc2 championship and um made the jump to xc1 that i probably shouldn't have at the time i think i was freshly 18 and just um still had a lot to learn i feel like and um just made the wrong decision and you know all i knew till then was win just win 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 that's that's all i knew and um looking back at it now i wish i would have done a few things different i took a couple years for granted for sure and um yeah just kind of had a lot of pressure on me to do well because i had the name deval like i i I won a lot and um yeah looking at it now just live and learn and um be better now for sure (laughs) and and i'm sure that that's probably what pressured you into a lot of the circumstances and situations that you ended up in maybe pushing yourself at times a little over the over the top over your head maybe in circumstances and and, and made mistakes yeah for sure you know back then i was just uh, oh i was just a kid like little scrawny and the 450 was a lot and just um struggle with the bike a lot i think that's why a lot of the injuries happen just over riding the bike and the bike would be riding me and um yeah just uh had a, a bad couple of years and decided to just kind of go out on my own and with the help of my mom and dad and try to turn things around with riding hondas and um you know that led into uh, a couple of years with them guys and factory support and very thankful and then um yeah, I went to uh, six days, 2014. I went to Argentina, took a bone stock on the 450, and I think I finished ninth overall. And kind of, I caught the eye of KR4 guys and Fred, and actually was on my way home. And Fred had had got in touch with me and said, "Hey, you know, we want you to come ride a Husky." And yeah, that's probably the the best decision I've I've made in a long time. And uh, yeah, it's turned into probably some of the greatest racing years for me for sure it did i mean yeah i mean that 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 was a growing time for you man you had a chance to 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 really uh take in a lot and experience a lot and i think that's helped pave the path and the road to where you are now and i i think puts you in the position of great success that you're in right now yeah for sure you know it was uh it was quite the eye opener and from probably 12 to 14, just how good I had it on a factory team, I guess you could say, um, just show up at the races and race. That's all I had to worry about. And, um, you know, when Fred and care for the whole Keegan family, they took me in at 15 and wrote for them in 15 and 16 and kind of, um, just built me back up, built me back up for sure. And, uh, that's when, um, I got the opportunity to sign with the Rockstar Husky Run team, and yeah, it's uh, it definitely built me into a, a the man I am for sure. For sure, and I mean, you, things have changed. You've changed. The sports changed, and you're on the cutting edge of it. I think right now. Um, before we move on to the here and now, I, I do let's highlight some of the stuff, man. I mean, one thing that you know we always talk about. I mean, let, let's talk about the highs right now. Uh, the high. Uh, the time that at snowshoe uh what was it i remember there was a lot of cal- it was either 17 seconds or four seconds i can't remember what the official 2008 yeah, yeah. it ended up being um it's funny because it ended up being two seconds i lost to david knight for and at the end of the race uh nathan Kenny, which he used to race uh professionally or whatever for ktm 
I remember him distinctively looking at me and saying, hey, you'll think about that two seconds for the rest of your life. At the time, 18 years old, I just about wanted GNCC. Yeah, right, you're crazy. And to this day, I still, I, I still think about that. Like, man, if I would have won that race, like, that would have changed a lot. Because even to this day, I don't, um, nobody's won from the XC2 class. Ben Kelly's been super close. There's been a lot of guys super close. And, um, yeah, that would have that would have been a bittersweet win for me. And it's funny just how I laughed Nate off. And now I'm like, a lot, even to this day, like you said, it was – just a couple of seconds that I think about it a lot <laughs> <laughs> you know and you know probably you can think in in the last mile where you could have gotten two seconds oh, it, was the, it was the last I remember distinctly the last lap I w I had to pit we I was right on David I had to pit and we came out of the pits and it had just started raining of the last lap and I came out of the pits like a bat out of hell and that we went down the road and made a right up the hill how the start that is now and I remember grabbing a handful of front brake and just crashing and sliding through all the gates on the road and mm. I lost a lot of time and then I that's that's where I lost the race that if I would have just been patient and just been more mature about it I would have been fine but um yeah just one of those things for sure hey man you were bad Thad. you had to do that. <laughs> yeah you know what I'm saying I was just like I, I yeah for sure and, um <laughs> I mean, even getting second then, it's it's still one of the, like one of the best races I think about for sure. Just you know, David at the time was the best of the best anywhere. Europe here, you know, he was he was the name. And um, I remember battling with him the whole race, and at the end of the race, him looking at me and being like, "You won that race. Like you were the best today." And um, yeah, that I definitely think about that a lot for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but you got the paycheck and you <laughs> yeah yeah it was funny because he's that's what he was like you were the best but you let me win like i it was like i should have won that race for sure yeah yeah i, I can imagine man are, are there any other moments out there like that that you let you think you left a lot on the table like, like that um there's been a lot of races the last couple of years i left a lot on the table just battling with caleb and whatever just coming up short and you know, I, I think about them races a lot on, on days that I suffer. And um, I don't know. There's a lot that I could talk about, but I better not. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we'll get, we'll get a late night episode. I'm going to start doing some live shows and we'll go on after 11 sometime and we'll talk about yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah for sure <laughs> <laughs> but uh well uh, but um but that right there i mean that that kind of i mean that obviously that that opened your eyes that i mean that that solidified you i think in the gncc racing world uh, as a true competitor and someone that had the speed the talent to do i mean you already had it but i think that was you know i, I think that right there always looms in the back of everybody's mind you know is like you know does dad heck, well heck yeah i mean you, you prove it time and time again and you know i mean that that's one of the the highs i think of what are some of the other highs whenever you look back over your career so far what do you what do you think are some of the other highs that you focus on um yeah just you know the whole um six days thing when we won in spain in 2016 um you know i started my six days journey in 2012 um germany italy uh, you know I've been to a lot of places for the six days and then, you know, to be a part of it in Spain, um, to win that as a team with them guys was unbelievable. It was just, you know, I, now I get to walk into my garage and see the bike that I rode there every time. And, um, definitely it, it, it was a high for sure. And I still think about it. People still talk about it and, you know, at the, at the same time, 2016, we won, won it as a team. You know, I, I really enjoy going the six six days. I love it. it it's you know, I, I love going for my country. And then 2017 rolls around. Um, I think I'm like two points out of the championship with Caleb. We're battling. We go to France. First test for first five minutes, I break my wrist. So it was like just a stupid crash, slid down and turn, must have put my hand down, and then you know, then that championship run done like it's over so then you know I went from a high in 2016 to man do I want to do six days ever again after 17 it was just kind of 
I don't know. It was one of those things. And but I say sixteen over rides every like that feeling for sure. And that's definitely a big high. Um, 2012 Unadilla will definitely be be one. That was my first um, XC1 win on a Honda with uh, John Rosh. Um, yeah, just a lot of people believed in me and to make it happen then and, and in that fashion to beat all them guys straight up at the time. And uh, yeah, that, that was a bittersweet one for sure. Just, um, I don't know, just finally getting that monkey off my back for XC1 for sure. I can imagine, man. Those are some really good highs. And, you know, uh, I, I'm sure there, there, there's other moments. I mean, pinnacle moments in your career, man. I mean, you look back yeah, on Yeah, so it. many, so many highs, lows. But, I mean, but go ahead. Just a lot of the highs, you, you like for me, I have to remember the highs, the highs, the highs, and just remember what that feeling is after, you know, the last couple of years I've been injured or whatever. And now I'm injured and, you know, people ask me, man, how do you still have the motivation? And you, I think about them highs, you know what I'm saying? Like that feeling of winning or, you know, winning in that fashion, you know, there's been races where I've won a mile from the finish or, you know what I'm saying? Or there's been races that I've been able to win by two plus minutes. It's like, no matter what the win is that high. And you know that, that motivates me at the end of the day, for sure, to, to have that feeling again. You know, and I'd mentioned the, you know, the evolvement of you, uh, you have evolved over the years. The sport has evolved. It has become a rather um, scientific, uh, I've said it before, it's, it's rather scientific from the training to the technology of the machines that you guys are riding. I mean, it's a true science. And I mean, it's not just go out and ride eat the best that you can, try to carb up or whatever in the morning, make sure you're, you're pretty loaded up on, 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 on plenty of uh, liquids and stuff like that so you don't dehydrate and then go out and, and kill yourself for three hours. It's not like that anymore. And that, that's what it was a lot like, I think, in, at one point. Even though you were training, it, it paled in comparison to what you guys do today. Yeah, for sure. I feel like even from when I started thinking I could win in 17 till now it, it's progressed like it's just um you know nothing against the guys in the past they're they're awesome badass dudes but I feel like now it's it I don't it's more of a chess match more with Caleb than anything he's good at managing the race and you know just being there watching him I guess I, I you know I know his weaknesses he knows my weaknesses it, it's become just there's so much more than going out and racing anymore you have to you have to be there at the start you have to be there at the middle you have to be there at the end and um I you know different people have different opinions on how it's done and you know I feel like uh, I'm a guy that shows up at the race that can win and I have my way of, of trying to win and I feel like it's a similar way um to Caleb's and then and you know other people like Stu he has his own mentality uh strength it's just everybody's kind of a little bit different and um, yeah, a lot more goes into it than just showing up and wanting to win a race anymore. So do you, I mean, what, what was your, what was your take on Caleb's retirement announcement whenever that coming into this year? I mean, was that a disappointment to you? Was it something like an inspiration to you? Like, <laughs> well, at least I, after this year, I won't have that competition. I'm not saying that it didn't inspire you to want to beat him even more because this is going to be maybe your last chance, you know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I, um, I think I knew before a lot of people did. He told me at the banquet. Um, I thought he was joking at first. I'm like, there's no way. Like, I feel like I got a good couple years in me or whatever. And, you know, I never really thought anything of it. And then you know, I, that's when I saw the press release or whatever. And, yeah, it was a, it was a bittersweet. Um, you know, I, it's almost come to show up the races to beat Caleb. Like, that's what I want to do. And, um, yeah, I knew this was going to be the last year and then the whole South Carolina thing. It was, I think I was more, I don't even, I think I was more disappointed with the fact that I wouldn't give him a run for the championship more than I was that I was injured. Like I, you know, we, we grew up being prodigies of GNCC, you know, growing up from the time we were on sixties till we are now, it's, it's been a long journey and, um, 
this sucks on my part because I'm the one who used to win all the time. And now, <laughs> you know, it's kind of flip flop. So I've had to learn, learn how to, to win. And, you know, I think he, <clears throat> nothing against my teams, but I think he was on a little better team than I was at the time. And, you know, he had the more support, the better bike and um, just, got a head start on me and then I think that's when um Husqvarna I was able to kind of figure things out with the bike I did a lot of testing and they listened to me and I listened to them and finally getting things figured out and, and then he's stepping away so um it's a fair there was definitely, yeah there was definitely a, a lot of motivation that coming into this year for sure to, to beat him and um yeah I I don't know. It's, it's, it's still a touchy subject. I, I think for myself and um, there's so many good guys now. So it's, it's, it's going to, I got, I shouldn't just be worried about him anymore. You know, that I think right. Josh is, Josh is kind of figuring out. Stu's getting a good program going. Toast going to be back. Ben Kelly. I mean, there's so many guys down the water now that, that are young and motivated that are coming up. That's going to want to beat me or beat Caleb these last couple of races. And, um yeah I think uh it, I think it, it's easy for him for sure to step away because he's got that many championships and, and he's always, he's been the best of the best the last couple of years and um I wish I could say that and but uh at the end of the day I feel like um I did the best I can and no matter what I, I feel like I've given it my all for sure you have I mean believe me you have nothing to hold your head low about that's for sure and don't be hanging any I mean, because I mean, you are, you are the drive for Caleb to do as well as he does <laughs> to help create that beast. I mean, come yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I'm sure I'm, I, I'm sure he doesn't like losing to me, and I don't like losing to him. And you know, it's 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 crazy when it we're two hours in and we're wheel to wheel, and we're kind of looking at each other like, hey, who, who's making the next move, or who's going to try to go, and it's been fun. Like I, I, you know, we've had our differences and we've banged bars a lot. And at the end of the day, the, the best, the best guy wins. And I, I've, as much as I hate losing to the guy, I feel like I've had the most fun that I possibly could the last couple of years racing. I, I just, I battling like that. And, you know, at the end of the day, when he does, does beat me, um, by a second, two seconds, it's, it's hard to, it's a hard pill to swallow, but I would rather get beat beat like that than uh, wheel to wheel than me being fourth or fifth I just I, I don't know it's makes more sense for me to, to have that feeling and that drive to be like all right he beat me this race I want to beat him next race like it, it's, it's it's fuel it's been fun for sure yeah and, it, and it's fuel for you that's for sure what about the races I mean since I mean round two and three Florida I mean yeah I mean how big of a surprise uh, was this whole Stu and Sherco machine. I mean, heck, I mean, talking to Stu, he didn't even know if the dang thing was going to finish the first race. I mean, and he wasn't meaning that in a bad way. He just knows yeah. how – I mean, he knows how hard he can be on stuff. <laughs> it's uh, – I'm pretty good friends with Stu, so he puts on a good front for people, and it's funny just to see people react to it and I think it, he he does a good job at it and I, it's funny like I enjoy seeing it or whatever and then um, the first national enduro I knew they'd be really strong just because they're from South Carolina and everything and um, I went up and tested at his place before Big Buck and I got to see him ride it and I'm like man like hey, he's actually going really good on this thing like he might be pretty good uh -huh. and then um you know we got, we were there for a couple of days and i was i was pretty impressed on how well he could ride on a moto track uh, and i'm like all right like hey, this might be the real deal and then for him to come out and ride the way he did and i feel like um yeah he's definitely got a lot of room for improvement with that bike and i feel like once he figures it out it's, it's going to be good for sure yeah, I, I believe so. I, I'm pretty impressed with it. I'm glad the program's working well for him. And, and what about, I mean, Josh Strang? I mean, we, we all know that he's had speed and this, that, and the other. And I, you know, maybe injury or whatever over the last couple of years after the heel and just getting re-healed, re, I guess, fueled or whatever it is. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's real. I mean, we saw it last season, but, I mean, this season he really seems to be on it. Yeah, for sure. You know, last year with Strang, it was kind of like a building year with Cow Air or whatever. And then this year, 
I definitely I knew he would be really good and you know just um you can't deny looking at social media being like oh man that guy's riding pretty good or whatever you kind of see what everybody's doing and um yeah I knew he'd be really good and, and for me you know strings I think maybe a year or two older than me so it's like I look at him and be like all right you know maybe I can be his age and still be where like be competitive you know what I'm saying like He's still competitive. He's been having. He's been on the podium every race, right? I think so. It's I like, think, yeah, yeah, man. It's like, all right, you know, like if he can do it, why can't I do it in a year or two? You know what I'm saying? So it's like, um, yeah, I definitely look at Josh as being like kind of like a like a motivation for me to be like, all right, I still have a good couple of years left in me for sure. Yeah, and, and then of course Ricky Russell. I mean, he's matching well, I think, with the coastal team and stuff. It seems like. Yeah, for sure. You know. Um, I've become pretty good friends with Ricky. Uh, we actually trained together in, in Florida this year and um, watching him grow with that bike has been awesome. Um, you know, we were, <laughs> it was funny cause it was actually the day I blew my knee out uh, back in October. I said, I, you know, rumors are floating around. Hey, Ricky's going to coastal Husqvarna. And um, I said, Rick, you should ride my bike. And he's like, all right. And he rode it at the end of the day and I'm like man like Lee looked way better on my bike than his Yamaha and I'm like all right like maybe he might be a threat and you know he has been in it and um to see him progress on that bike in Florida was pretty cool and um yeah he's uh I think he's still figuring the bike out and everything and um Timmy's been really good about helping the coastal guys out so it's uh I feel like he's definitely getting things figured out for sure. Yeah, he cer certainly certainly is, and I mean he's not the only one. I mean, there's a, there's a Jordan looking good. Uh, yeah, there's like it's it's it, that's what I said. It's so hard to talk about these guys because they're so the like the deep or like the the field's so deep nowadays. It, it's kind of cool and to see all like the factory support coming back and helping these guys out. It's it's pretty awesome for sure it, it really is it really is i mean and, and you've been through it a lot man i mean you've yeah seen highs and some lows man i mean you and you've seen i mean there a few years ago i mean you saw it go up and then it kind of yeah. took a dive That's and now like I, I was there you know i was there when it was the peak and i don't know what four five six 2007 you know when when there was 10 factory teams and then you know i was there one the economy went down and then, and then I'm, I'm here again when it's kind of coming back to, so to see it coming back, that's, that's a refreshing breath there for sure to see so many guys have factory rides nowadays. It really is. I mean, uh, and the talent pool, like you said, is, is extremely deep. You got the XC2 class even and the XC3 yeah. class. And I mean, it, it's good to see where the, the sport is going and we're, we're, look, yeah, I mean, where do you see the sport going? I mean, right now, I mean, uh, say no COVID-19 and everything yeah. was on track. I mean, what would you, what would you be expecting right now? I feel like, you know, this year would be even bigger than last year, just because I feel like um, the GNCC is getting more popular than it has been. You know, there's, you know, I went to the West coast a couple of times last year and raced a couple of horse races. And a lot of the guys were asking me questions about the GNCC and, uh, you know, what would it be like? And, you know, I, I think, it's starting to catch a lot of attention other than just the East coast. And I feel like, um, it's just growing as a sport. I, I just getting better and better and more, more people are realizing that. And it, it's cool. Um, yeah, I feel like if there wasn't the whole COVID-19 thing this year, it would have, would have been a spectacular year for GNCC for sure. So what do you think, what do you think, I mean, you know, about as much, I think as everybody else knows, I mean, what do you, what do you think it's, how do you think it's going to affect the rest of the year? Oh, I don't know, man. It's you hear so many different rumors of what's going on or whatever, and um, I don't know. It's a touchy subject, so I don't really know. Like, I want it to be well just for you know the riders who make and make a living from racing. That you know, I want them to be able to race and um, just you know, you 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 don't. I mean, it, it's a big thing in the world right now, but for like the motorsport side of it, if you look like Supercross, Motocross, those guys don't even know when they're racing yet. So it's kind of like, I think we're always kind of second or third to those guys. So it's kind of, 
we kind of feed off them guys. And if them guys ain't racing yet, I feel like it's going to be a while for sure. Yeah, uh, I, I know. what I mean, it's, it's kind of scary to think. I mean, what if there are no more races this year? You know, yeah, I mean, I mean, sure. I mean uh, that leaves a lot of things out there on the table, man. I mean, for a lot of people, I mean, for you in particular, I wouldn't be mad. Yeah. It's not, <laughs> yeah. But it's at the same time, it's, yeah, it's a, a crappy situation for sure. Yeah. So, um, what's, what's your plans? I mean, what, what are you, what, what are you doing right now? But you're just going to be hunting and just hanging and waiting this thing out. Yeah. You know, just for me, I can't really do much. Hopefully maybe two more weeks I can get back to, to start cycling training, that whole side of it. And, um, I, I'm still a long ways from riding. So that for me in the foreseen future is still stuck quite a few months away and realistically would if the season progress does start back up will, is there a possibility to see thad the ball back on the bike this year or is this something you say okay let's just wait it's that's still up in the air for me just kind of it it's hard to say for me because that's like the last two weeks i've made a jump and a bound written recovery wise i can start doing a lot more and um I'm kind of ahead of the recovery. I feel like um, just going to physical therapy and, and listening to them guys, what they say about me and, you know, the realistic, I want to say, you know, after summer break, it, it was, is the goal to be back, but I, I doubt it. You know, uh, it's like, you know, if we, if they do start racing again, and which I'm already, I'm already out of the championship anyways. So it's like, do I try to race or do I try to wait till I know that I'm a hundred percent. And, you know, for me, it's snowshoes after the break now, like oddly enough, that has been one of the highs and lows of my career as a race, but it's like, man, that's a hard race for me to miss just because it's home, like West Virginia. So many people there that I know when um, Iron Man, I hope to be for sure. That's that's the main goal is, is Iron Man for sure, but I don't know. We'll say we'll have to see. <laughs> it's it's a tough decision. Like I don't know. I want to do things right. I feel like I've always kind of jumped to the gun in the past, and um, you know, I've always I've always been I've always had that grit where you know I I get hurt and I come back and I can be stronger. And then I I think I thought that with my knee, and you know, look where I'm at now. I had to I had to get surgery to get it fixed so it's like i want to do things right this time that way i know i can come back and be 100 percent and just um it's still so up in the air about when i can race and when i can start riding but hopefully you know in the next couple of weeks i can start training again until then i'll just turkey hunt every day there you go hey man it's been, i've been looking at those mounts behind your behind you you got one over <laughs> the right shoulder yeah. you got several or several over your right shoulder yeah. one over your left shoulder get the phone up let's go take a look at this <laughs> and i want to hear okay. some of the stories on this stuff i mean this this is this is the uh true thad duval right here man i mean <laughs> all right so um these three here are a couple of uh, West Virginia deer that I've been able to kill. Um, some decent deer. And then um, this is my biggest deer. Wow. Uh, yeah, he, uh, he he scored 168. Um, yeah, shot him a couple years ago. We called him Dagger. And then this is actually my wife's uh, bow kill. Um, a freaking huge deer uh she killed it a couple years ago um this is uh let's see if you see bobcat i shot with my bow got wow. it mounted and then uh this is my recent deer that i shot um, that's I, that that right there that's a, that's <laughs> that's that's got a nice spread on it right there yeah so we called him 7-eleven and uh, my grandpa's deer that passed away he shot um back in the day so kind of Mineral things, but uh, yeah, I have a I have a few deer mounts. Um, a lot yeah. of them are still up in my parents' house too. So <laughs> I got a got a couple. So I like I said with um, yeah, just I grew up hunting and with now, racing, we don't do much in the winter time. So I have a bunch of time to hunt. So it works so, out. And good. those aren't pin deer either. I mean, those are really you. Uh, can hunt those, yeah, you can hunt those right. 
yeah, I, I hunt them deer. Them are 100% free range deer. And, um, yeah, for me, like I live, like I can look out my window right now and see Ohio. So it's like, I live right on the river and I have a, um, I'm lucky enough to own a, a couple, uh, not own, but I, I'm friends with people who own a big farm in, in Ohio. So, uh, yeah, I'm fortunate enough to be able to hunt some big Ohio deer too. That's nice. That's nice. Now, which, yeah. which are the nicer deer, the West Virginia deer or the Ohio deer? Oh, the Ohio deer for sure. It's, it's crazy. Like I can hunt here at home and look over and see Ohio and, and some of the deer that I let walk over there, I would never dream about letting walk here in West Virginia. And it's just like, uh, I don't know. Every, the deer are so much bigger over there. It's crazy. It's, it's unreal. And even like the turkeys, the turkeys are bigger over there. So I don't know. It's just genetics. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. Just, I mean, it's literally feet across. Yeah. The- <laughs> yeah. Like I live right on the Ohio river. Like I, I mean, I can hit a golf ball from my front porch and hit the Ohio river. So it's like, it's super close and it works out pretty well. I can <laughs> kill four turkeys for the year where I could only kill two if I only hunt in West Virginia. And, um, yeah, it, it's cool. I'm, I'm very lucky to, to, I don't know, get to do what I do for sure. My <laughs> wife hates it because I, we literally race for 10 months and then I hunt for the next three every day. So <laughs> we don't, I don't spend much time at home. <laughs> you guys she's probably got a better marriage than what she realizes then I <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so i'm just kidding no you guys you guys are great man i mean she and speaking of your wife great support there too i mean she really she really fit right yeah. into the gncc racing world yeah it's um yeah it's been a good ride with her for sure you know she was just a good old city slick girl who started coming to the races with me and she's turned into one of my biggest support systems for sure. And, um, Hey, buddy, yeah, let I think me tell you, that, I, I, they, she, they ain't nobody got yours back better than your mama and, and her. I mean, <laughs> yeah. those two right there. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think I don't think you could mellow down a little bit, thankfully. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So it's, it's been a, a better the last couple of years and, uh, yeah, you know, mom and dad have, especially my mom has groomed her into being the, the, my biggest support system for sure. And I think, um, some rides she doesn't quite enjoy riding home after the races. Cause I don't talk that much. Um, so it's, it's, you know, we kind of joke on days that I lose and she's kind of like, Oh, it's going to be a long quiet ride home. Huh? And I'm like, yeah. So it's just, does she ever twist her nuts, man? And, and, and really get on you for something though. No, oh, you, you have no idea. There's, there's been a couple pit stops where she screams some stuff that I need to get going. So then I get going. So, um, yeah. So her, yeah, she's, uh, she's definitely, a, a I listened to her during the race for sure. So, um, <laughs> and what yeah. people, people don't realize, I mean, there's points there and I mean, there's a lot of things, there's pride there, there but I mean, the difference between first and second, and I mean, just to break it down, I mean, there's a lot of dollars in between a one and a two at your <laughs> a level. Lot. I think a lot more than what people realize, especially when it comes to like a, like uh, the championship or, you know what I'm saying? There's not so much, I mean, there's a big jump between first and second at a, at a GNCC um, from the factory side of point. And then you got the championship, which, yeah, I've I've lost out on a quite a few dollars the last couple of years. <laughs> so, yeah, it's uh, I think it's a little bit more than people yet. realize. You yeah, I know. I, I got a I got a wife that loves Amazon and a kid now, so I got to start winning some races. <laughs> there you go. That's all the incentive you need. Chad. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. I hear you on that. But no, it's it's been good with her. She's been really good. You know, she uh, um. We've been fortunate enough where she comes and lives with me in Florida when I train down there. And, um, we've actually been able to bring Jacoby along. So it's nice coming home at the end of the day, having a, a cooked meal instead of having to go somewhere, whip something up. And, uh, yeah, she's been a, she's, she's been a trooper. She jumped in and I think we, uh, we kind of got together in 2011 and never looked back since. So it's been a good ride. It's been good for you. Good, good for you. There's no doubt about it. It's, it's good yeah. to watch you get but both of you grow up the way that you guys have and blossomed into wonderful young uh, people and parents and 
and all that. And, uh, uh, Thad, I know uh, we've been on here for a while. I get on here and I get the chit chatting, and I can talk. <laughs> no, it's good. It's I fun. could go. I mean, yeah. I could go. There's a hundred million different things that we could talk about. I mean, I, I always, I mean, I, I always, always poke at you and stuff. But I mean, the 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 Steel Creek crashes, man. I mean, that that place, yeah. that place always. I mean, I could talk to you about that. I, any parting shots on the Steel Creek thing, man? <laughs> but uh, love hate relationship with that place for sure. That's um been able to win there the last couple of years but i i think i've uh let's see i got life lighted out of there one year it's in that the, place has been rough the wind's so sweet you were talking about sweet oh wind. yeah those are some especially the first year i did it that was like man that was a huge relief like i don't know that i i love that place like i like how rough it gets i like it all the elevation change i really enjoy racing there it's just like man, that place was brutal to me. Like, <laughs> I don't know, man. And then to finally win there and win the last couple of years, it's been, it's been an un unbelievable ride there. And, and um, yeah, it just, you know, it sucks when I'm going back, but we kind of just outgrew the place. And that's definitely going to be a place I'll, I'll remember for a long time, maybe for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, and, and you, that is that is crazy the way that 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 we've outgrown those places but i'll tell you something i can remember the first time that i ever went to steel creek there wasn't a concrete bridge there we didn't even go across that creek where yeah. the campground is that was the pits that yeah, was the pro I remember, pits that was the amateur pits that was it all yeah i remember going there when uh, um they couldn't even race the minis there because they're like the creek and everything and man i remember being there 25 years ago maybe i mean i was just a kid like little little so i mean there's some been some places we go that i've grown up racing for the last 25 years every year so it's 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 cool and to see i guess it's good that we outgrow them i mean that, that just yeah. shows how good the sport is and um yeah that's awesome for sure are there any are there any of the venues that you look back on that maybe we've outgrown and will probably never go back and race that you say man i'd really like to be able to go back there and race or a place yeah. that you went to that you never got to race at that you'd like to go to um looking back on it i always really enjoyed boyer's pa i i really liked racing there we haven't raced there in a long time and right i remember being on there i think last year we raced there maybe i was on a 125 and um, I really enjoyed that place. And then, um, I don't know, a lot of people probably don't remember the Texas GNCC. Um, Yilmer. that was, yeah, that was a fun one. I really enjoyed that place. Um, yeah, there's a couple that I, I wish we could go back to. And, um, a couple that I'm glad we're back to like Aonia Pass, GNCC. Like I really enjoyed that. And that sucked when we kind of went away from there. And now that we're back, I really enjoy that place. Um, uh, yeah, always, always gonna X Factor. I mean, that place is beautiful, and being a deer guy, deer guy, I am. I really enjoyed that place, and yeah, there's so many places that was uh, that was cool. I like the limestone in Indiana. Um, yeah, I've been a lot of places over my career, and to remember certain places like that or certain rides is pretty cool. It is, it is, and of course, uh, any parting shots, any words of wisdom you want to pass along to anybody before we let you go uh no just um yeah thanks for having me on the show i really appreciate it and um it was cool to kind of talk about some stuff like that and, and kind of get the background of things and um yeah that was fun yeah hey man we'll talk about some other stuff in the future i mean i kind of like the first time out i mean i know i know you i've known you since you was a kid and i know a lot of but a lot of people don't know who you are don't know yeah. where you came from they don't know Thad Duvall and, and, and what you're all about, man. I mean, yeah. you are. It's, about it's funny because I've seen a lot of you know, last couple of days on Twitter. Um, there's been like a quad bike beef between the, a lot of the guys. So it's, it's funny. Like I sit back and just kind of laugh and you know, these, these bike guys, they have no idea that the respect they need to have for quad riders. It's, it's <laughs> funny. And um, I have to chime in every now and then. And uh, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a uh, it's cool that I can see both sides of it for sure, and it I know is. you being a quad guy, bike guy too. So, um, yeah, it's it's cool to get that pers know that perspective. I guess you could say. I don't know, you know what it is about the ATVs, man. I mean, they're, they're, it's, I think it's the people. Honestly, I think the people yeah. is, is is what captured me at first, and then some of the racing. I mean, 
well, you watch Bill Balance and Chris Borch. Yeah, all those guys <laughs> grow up. Yeah. It, it's cool because I've seen both sides of it. And um, it's funny. I was just thinking, like, growing up, you know, dad would get these quads. And um, I remember, I probably shouldn't say it, but he tested gas gas was coming out with a quad. I think it was a 520 or something like that, four stroke. And uh, wow. I remember, I remember he rode at one time and the thing was, it, it was, it wasn't very good. Let's just say that. And I end up, he had to put like 20 hours on it or something. And I end up putting like 19 hours on this thing. And I, I fell in love with it. I wanted to keep it. I'm like, man, I could race this thing or whatever. But it was, it's funny. Cause like, I can see, I get, I can understand both sides of it. And, and uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad I can be in the middle of the kind of perspective guy. That's kind of cool. From a racer's perspective, and it's funny, I've heard I've heard a lot of guys, two wheel only guys don't have, you know, I mean, they they have respect for the quads either way. They don't care one way or the other, but they like racing the day after the quads. They like that the quads open the trails up. Is that something that you like, or do you like do you like going in some place where there's fresh terrain and and, and no quads have been through? Um, it, to me, it don't matter. I I grew up doing both, you know. And then there's, um, I will say that, um. I think when we did the the back to back races at Tennessee, I mm -hmm. think we did actually make the track rougher than that, what them guys did. And uh, I remember a lot of those guys complained about that. It was funny, but um, looking back on it now, and I think we actually did make it more rough than them guys did. And um, for me, it don't matter. I mean, I, I enjoy racing after the quads. There's more lines kind of opened up a little bit, and um, yeah a lot of times them guys get the shaft on muddy races because usually by the time we race it's freaking perfect and it's a mud fest <laughs> for them guys so uh yeah i'm lucky we race on sunday sometimes for sure <laughs> you're already in the <laughs> shot when you duck yeah <laughs> he said, Hi, Maggie. Uh, it's all right man it, this her ears must have been her, her ears must have been burning because now she's in the kitchen <laughs> that's what it is <laughs> well, so. i mean heck man i mean this ain't nothing i mean this is just a check-in this ain't no professional yeah. we ain't on the nightly news or nothing like this man it's just yeah. a couple of guys chit-chatting about racing but i'm gonna let you go bro and uh, i'm sure I i'd like to talk to you again sometime and maybe we can get to you yep, before sure. you before you get back on uh you know back into it uh, if you got anything you want to talk about just hit me up we'll certainly put it on hopefully we'll be going live and i'll get you in on a few actions then and we'll get some some uh, viewer uh, comments and questions and yeah. stuff like that going on or something like that. Yeah. So for sure, you know, if the races start back up, I know we've talked about coming to a couple of them and watching and bringing Jacoby and stuff. So uh, yeah, hopefully we'll see you guys sooner or later. And I expect that you'll be at the racer TV booth if you're going to be there on <laughs> Sunday, right? We'll see. We'll see. We'll see if we'll get in there. So um, I actually, it was pretty fun, pretty fun at the Western when, when I got in there, just kind of, get a different perspective of how the race happens and uh oh man yeah I don't, I don't know if you've watched did you did you get a chance to watch the georgia and the florida rounds uh, the 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 coverage that we had with the yeah the, it was good for sure wow i've never yeah. seen never seen as much of a gncc race as what i've seen those last two races i mean it was crazy yeah it was good for sure so. yeah and the way yeah I, so hopefully I, we'll see See you guys before too long. Yeah, no doubt. All right, I'll let you go. I can keep chit chat all day. <laughs> that's all. It's good. <laughs> yeah. All right, that's that Duvall. I'm Rodney Tomlin, and this has been 10 Second Extended. <laughs>